Hi, my name is Holger Knublauch, and I'm going to introduce a new capability of Top Rate Composer's Maestro Edition that is able to import arbitrary XML documents into OWL. The example XML file that I'm starting with uh, just contains two types of elements, processes and activities, and as you can see uh, there are a couple of uh, attributes defined, efficiency and name, and uh, the example itself is about uh, all the various processes that it takes to order a pizza. But you can imagine um, that the same applies to any other XML document that you have. The new capability here in Composer is that I'm now able to right-click on any XML file directly and just open it uh, with Top Rate Composer directly. And the system is actually generating an ontology for the XML file on the fly. So uh, for each of the tags or elements that are found in the XML, it's creating one class. And the actual tags themselves then become instances of those classes. So now we have an activity class and a process class. The attributes of those elements actually become data type properties. So the system has generated three data type properties and when we look at the instances we can see that the values uh, of the attributes are actually copied into the data type properties. So now we're looking at uh, the order process which has the name order. In addition to the data type properties, the system also keeps track of the nesting of the XML elements in the tree structure. Uh, and we are using a property called composite child for that purpose. We can actually visualize the uh, relationships among all the XML instances in an associations view. And as you can see here, the associations view uh, gives a fine overview of the original XML instance document. So now that we are in, in RDF, we can uh, do whatever we want with the uh, XML instances. In particular, uh, we could run a Sparkle query. So in this uh, Sparkle query here, I'm finding all the um, activities that have an efficiency larger than 6. You can run the query and uh, the query comes back with the result. Alright, so now that we have uh, the instances here, we uh, probably have uh, other f XML files as well that have the same structure. And we may want to generalize this a little bit so that uh, we can merge all those XML instance files into uh, uh, a single ontology. For that purpose we are post-processing the ontology a little bit and um, actually make it more of an, an OWL type ontology. For example we want to uh, get rid of the uh, rather ugly uh, property name here. So I've renamed this to efficiency and also you know there are two different name attributes found in the XML document and from an XML point of view they are different, but in an OWL world we probably want to merge them into a single property. So I'm turning this into a name property and I'm deleting the other property so that we now only have one. Finally I'm um, going to introduce another class which serves as an abstract superclass of activity and process. Let's call it process object. and we are moving activity and process under that class. We can now even say that um, we want to add a restriction to process object to specify that the maximum cardinality of the name property is 1 so that there can never be more than one value. Good, so now we have an, an OWL model. We can wipe out all the instances from, from this particular example. Let's delete them. 
and then let's save the uh, resulting OWL model into an OWL file. So I'm uh, calling it process OWL. I'm saving it. And the file is here and now I can um, change its base URI to something more meaningful. If I ever wanted to make this uh, ontology public, let's put it on onto some uh, base URI that is on the web. Alright, so now we have a standalone ontology which of course now we could merge together with other ontologies. We could for example also merge this with uh, different process ontologies that are out there on the web. But in this case I'm going to uh, just use this uh, ontology um, and import the original XML document into it. And by doing so the system will actually again import uh, all the XML um, elements into instances, but it will actually reuse the classes that it, it is now finding in the ontology. So if I uh, look at the class tree here, you can see it process object has 12 instances and activities and so on. So it has uh, this time not generated new classes, but it has reused the uh, classes that I have defined in, the, in this process ontology and you can see we could now uh, import many other instances file uh, which, which have the same tag names and the same attribute names and they would all uh, use the same ontology classes. The way that this is implemented under the hood actually is that we are attaching metadata to the classes and attributes or uh, properties that have been generated. We have introduced uh, two new properties in a system ontology that we call XMAP. XMAP essentially has two annotation properties called attribute and element and the element property is used to create links from a, an OWL class back to a corresponding XML document element. So in this case here the uh, activity class has been derived from the activity XML element so we are putting this annotation into the class uh, so that we can later, um, when we want to save back the document, we can uh, reconstruct the XML structure. The same is actually done for the uh, data type properties. Using the XMAP attribute uh, property, we can point back from the OWL ontology to the original XML uh, attribute. So you can see from this approach that in principle um, you could, although you can load arbitrary XML documents, it may sometimes make sense to uh, fine-tune uh, the resulting ontologies a little bit so that they are more, uh, more user-friendly from an OWL perspective. We have actually done uh, that already for, for HTML and XML, uh, XHTML documents. We have defined um, an HTML ontology which you will see in a minute, uh, which is um, by default loaded whenever you are uh, opening an HTML file uh, into Top Rate Composer. And while this is showing up, um, let me switch the class tree to start at our thing. And let's open uh, the tree view again so that we can look at the uh, resulting uh, XML element structure. And to those familiar with HTML, you will uh, now recognize uh, the various elements here. Essentially this is a way of um, importing arbitrary X uh, HTML documents into uh, an OWL ontology as well. All the various tags simply become instances of those uh, things such as H1 for uh, and a heading and uh, images, etc., etc. The mapping is, of course, very syntactic, so we are really just representing the syntactic structure of the original document. 
but on the other hand side there is quite a lot of useful information already uh, also in, in the uh, uh, HTML tags so you could imagine we could we would want to load an HTML page and then just extract certain uh, places of the uh, HTML document and convert them into, for example, uh, geographical coordinates, etc. Alright, that's it. Uh, you can find more about this uh, when you go to the Toprate Composer webpage and notice that these capabilities are only available in the uh, Maestro edition. Thanks for your attention.